Welcome, everyone, to the Spend Life Well Show, where we apply biblical wisdom to your financial life. I'm Certified Kingdom Advisor Mark Trice here in the studio with Jesse Hamilton. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Hey, it's, you know, it's typical in at the end of the year in January or so that we look back on what the previous year was. We're in 2024 now. And what happened last year? What were the highlights? What were the lowlights? What events will we remember? Mm-hmm. Most importantly, what did we learn? So we had a lot of noteworthy things happen in 2023 outside of the markets. The conflicts in Gaza and Ukraine, Sudan. Uh, I don't know if you know, India surpassed China as the most populous country in the world. And uh, of course, new temperature records were set all around the globe. I know here in Central Texas, we felt that. It was a little bit warm summer, but not (laughs) like it had in the previous summers. But Yeah. And uh, the word artificial intelligence suddenly spiked up in boardroom meetings and and exploded everywhere. Yes, it did. In fact, we're artificial intelligence right now. We're Max Headroom. Uh I'm dating myself. Jesse has no clue who Max Headroom is. But he was an artificial robot. He looked fake. <laughs> but these days, I don't, I don't know how many things I saw over the Christmas holidays of people generating artificial intelligence images of themselves to you know, have put on about 20 pounds with muscles and everything like that. We think that's going to continue to influence things for the for the future. Yeah. Uh, remember when that, that Chinese spy balloon ended up over the U.S. and there was that whole fiasco and, of course, the Barbenheimer... Uh, Hollywood agenda this I, summer. I finally saw one of those movies this okay. last weekend. I will not tell you which one, but my wife picked it. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> If you take a wild guess, I really liked one and disliked the other, but we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> so in some ways, though, Jesse, one of the most notable occurrences of 2023 is actually what didn't happen. Right, and it could still happen, but what is that? That's having a recession. Okay. When 2023 began, the fear of recession was so widespread that it almost seemed inevitable. According to one survey, 70% of economists expected a recession to hit the U.S. in 2023. Another fat survey found 58% of economists, I, I want to know who these economists are. They don't provide names. They didn't they? ask me. Uh, <laughs> believe more than uh, 50% chance of recession. So for politicians, pundits, and analysts, it was practically all that anyone can talk about. Yeah, including us. Including us. I was going to say, we were kind of in that boat, and uh, we're dealing with unprecedented data here. I know everybody hates that word, but it's true. But it never happened, right? right. The economy did grow uh, 2.2% first quarter, 2.1% the second, and 49 in the third. And we're still awaiting... Those are annualized rates. It's not yeah, like yeah. it went up 2% in one quarter. Yeah. So that the technical definition, which we won't even get into that, is is two negative quarters in a row. And that right. did happen. We didn't have them. We didn't have that at least but, in yeah. 2023. You know, but it, people want to change the definition of what that means and don't get us started on that whole fiasco. But the, the main point is in 2023, all those gloomy forecasts about a recession simply just didn't come to pass. Yeah, they didn't. Now, let's be fair about that. All those economists who got it wrong, they had some very good reasons for why they were expecting a recession. Yeah. Those reasons are based on data, logic, and just simply history of what we've what's happened in the past. Yeah, we mentioned several of these in our monthly updates, which we do uh, every first Thursday of the month. But... Yeah, we came out of a really nasty 2022. All the investors were kind of raw and battle-scarred because of what happened. And consumer prices were starting to come down from their highs, but inflation was still high and interest rates are high. And the market couldn't really make up its mind, right? That's right. So um, inflation being so high and being the highest level we've seen in, you know, at least 15 years, right? Since the Great Recession, um, every indication that we had was that recession was coming. Yeah. And, of course, the S&P 500, which dropped over 19% in 2022. Yeah, and that, and down lower at one point, you know, 26 or 27% at one right, point. Right, that's just where it closed. So, so for economists, you know, all this data seemed to point to a, a clear way forward, Right. The Federal Reserve is mandated to keep consumer prices as stable as possible. You sound like Jerome Powell. I do, yeah. Its target has long been to hold inflation to around 2%. So when inflation runs hot, the Fed's main tool for lowering it, it um, is to raise interest rates. 
Higher rates often lead to lower consumer spending. Lower spending, in turn, prompts businesses to decrease the cost of goods and services they provide. Eventually, those higher rates create an environment where supply is greater than demand, thus cooling the inflation. So they don't have except a, for last year. They don't have a very sophisticated tool belt there to. to no, fix they things. don't have much. They've got a little bit of, of interest rate policy, and there's some other things some that debt manipulating their balance sheet can do this. Yeah, but you know, there's a side effect to all of this. If if people's spending drops, businesses are forced to cut back on expansion and labor costs. That leads to rising unemployment and a contracting economy. And all these things combined means recession. Except it didn't happen. It didn't happen. <laughs> the 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 string of events just isn't just logical. It's supported by history. With in, when inflation has skyrocketed in the past. The Fed's playbook has usually worked to bring prices down, but it's triggered a recession too. Economists call this a hard landing. Now, right. these the rates that we've had in the last year and a half are not the highest ever. Go back to the 1980s, we, we had much higher rates, and it hasn't had the impact on employment like we thought. Unemployment rates are still below 4% as of um, this recording. And so, you know, it's important to put the discipline into perspective. One thing that caused a change this time around is the fact that there was so much stimulus money during the COVID era that people had much more available cash to spend than they had ever before. Yeah, we've seen credit card uh, usage increase 40% on debt there. And uh, one thing we haven't even covered yet is the inverted yield curve. Every single time in history of the United States, an inverted yield curve has re- has led to a recession. So when prices come down, but the economy does not, economists call that a soft landing. In fact, Treasury, cha- uh, Treasury uh, Chairperson uh, Janet Yellen keeps talking about it's still a recession, um, but maybe a softer one. Yeah, and that's proven very difficult to achieve. But it's no surprise then that a lot of economists predicted the hard landing in 2023, not the soft landing. So and now a year later, that, that year later, that hasn't happened. Interest no. rates did continue to rise. As of, as of this recording, they're around 5.3%. Inflation has continued to cool, albeit slowly. The November inflation rate, we haven't got the December inflation rate, was at 3.1% annualized. But that's a that's about a 3.4% drop from the beginning of the year. Now, that means inflation is still going up. It means they're accelerating at a slower pace. That's correct. So the unemployment rate was 3.7 as of November. Mm-hmm. I think it went to 3.8 in December. You know, we've already cut, covered that the economy continues to grow. So from a financial standpoint, this to me is a major storyline of 2023, which means we have to ask ourselves, what can we learn from it? As a financial advisor, we've taken time to jot down a few lessons I think are worth remembering as we move into the new year. Here they go. Yeah, and I think, Mark, you might enjoy this because it's very behavioral. We like studying behavioral economics, and our first point is to always emphasize preparation over prediction. We don't have a crystal ball, and so we don't try to guess or predict what the future will be. That's right. We analyze data. We are not in the prediction business. We say that all the time. That's right. We're not in the prediction business, but we are in the data analysis position. And the preparation business. That's right. So economists who predict a recession weren't stupid, right? No. I kept saying that. Weren't stupid. I still think there's one coming. Mm -hmm. But they used the best data that they had to make the best predictions they could. But 2023 shows that even the most well-informed people simply just can't see the future. Right. Right. Even the near future, there's just simply too many variables to consider. Our economy is much more complex was than it was even 20 or 30 years ago. That's why as investors, we always have to summer emphasize planning over predicting. Uh, we can't predict when the markets will drop. I know a lot of people want us to predict the winning stock or predict the winning mutual fund, and we don't do that. We can't predict when the markets are going to drop nearly 20% as they did in 2022, Mm -hmm. or that they'll rise by well over 20% as they did in 2023. What we can do is plan ahead for what we'll do if the markets fall or if they rise. That's all we can do as financial planners and advisors. We can mentally prepare financially for both market storms and market sunshine. Mm -hmm. So that's 
how we can weather the former and take the advantages of the latter. Right. So when we predict, we're essentially swinging for the fences on every pit, uh, every pitch, right? Right. We don't want to do that. Occasionally, uh, a prediction can lead to a home run, and that's a lot of people want to get rich quick on a big stock pick or something. That's not that's not what we do. By planning, we don't have to swing at all. Since we don't control the situation, we simply make the best out of every situation. We, we only control what we can control, like you said. Yeah. And that's, that's our that's, own behavior. That's what we do. So the second point we want to make about this is be wary of confirmation bias. Mm-hmm. Now, early in the year, I spoke to many people who were convinced a recession would happen. I was one of them. Because of that, they tended to disregard all data that pointed away from recession and only valued information that confirmed what they already believed. As a result, a lot of investors missed out on a good year in the markets. You might have looked really great when we had a few pullbacks during the year when you were sitting nice at 5% in your fixed account, but uh, you overall, you might have missed out on a little bit of returns. So as an investor, don't be focused on trying to be right all the time. Be focused on getting beating ready for whatever the market brings. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, we tend to have an emotional response when we come out of a year like 2022. We're all beat up and we don't want that to happen again. So be wary of that bias. Point number three has to go with what you hear on the commercials for financial products. Remember that past performance is no indic- indicative of future results. That's pretty good. Yeah, I know. I need to practice a little bit. <laughs> You've probably seen that line in the past, and it's a great example. 2023 is a great example of why. Just because in rising interest rates have led to recessions in the past doesn't mean they always will. Right. Now, this was the only time where it didn't happen, <laughs> uh, and we still think that it could happen, but we don't predict. There's a first time for everything, That's I, right. I guess. Just because <laughs> the markets went in one direction yesterday doesn't mean they'll go the same direction tomorrow, and that's why... You know, history is a great resource to draw from when making decisions. It's just a guide, not a guarantee. Yeah, exactly. So what's the fourth point, Jesse? So at the same time, don't anchor to the present. As as humans, we have a natural tendency to think that the way things are today is how they'll be tomorrow. And I know that I'm guilty of this, and a lot of our financial planning families are as well. When 2022 ended, many investors felt that 2023 would be the same, and they were scared. Yeah, and right, and rightly so. Is it, uh, going through a bear market is is a hard process, especially if you don't have a plan for how you're going to deal with the market. Right. So you know, all, it all goes back to planning and preparation, Jesse. We're going to continue here at Clear Vista Financial to prepare for all possible outcomes. We'll plan for how to reach the outcomes we want and avoid the ones we don't. But instead of predicting, instead of assuming. Instead of anchoring, we'll accept that the future is written in clay, not stone. Mm -hmm. Only when it becomes the past does it harden. So when you get right down to it, Jesse, the lesson of 2023 is this. The future is flexible, and so we must be flexible. By doing this, we can continue to shape your future into whatever you want it to be. So... We wish you a happy new year. Hope your new year is already off to a great start. We want to encourage you uh, to subscribe to this podcast on YouTube or Spotify and just give us a thumbs up and we'll let you know when a new podcast has come out and you can update that. And um, we want to thank you. If you have questions, you can always send us an email at info at clearvistafinancial.com or send us a text at 254 282-0495. That's 254-282-0495. Jesse, it's been a good week. Yes, it has. We'll let people get their their day back. We would love to hear from you. I mean, seriously, if you want to give us a text and you have an idea for an upcoming show, or if you have a specific question, just please send it over. Folks, you've been listening to the Spend Life Well Show. Have a blessed week, and we'll see you next time.